ah, freshly clean shaven. I feel good. I feel sleek. This format don't feel sleek. It feels like that ugly girl that you swipe left on them dating apps. And honestly, I thought it was just me. But it's not just me. It's the whole community on YouTube, pretty much. At least my community. We're going to go through some comments because actually a lot of y'all made some really good points. And I want to talk about it. So let's dive on into it, shall we? I shaved good. Man, I look good even in this bad lighting. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo brown stain off of this terrible format and that like and subscribe button, as well as hitting that ding-dong Taco Bell notification bell so you can be part of the A-Gang. Also, you can check out my book, link in the description. Yes, I wrote a book, Looks Can Be Deceiving. I've been told it's very good, and not just by my mama and my papa. I've had other people who have bought the book tell me it's great. So if you want to check out an inspirational book, go check it out in the description down below. Half of all profits go to the VHL Alliance. That's the type of cancer I have to help raise awareness about this rare disease. I hope you all are having a fantastic day. Instead of putting your money into a garbage format, go put $9.99 into a digital book instead of putting it into this terrible format. Maybe you'll be inspired. So I want to talk about uh, some comments that were left. Okay, this is still recording. Uh, I want to talk about some comments that were left by uh, some of y'all on my previous video uh, where I said Yu-Gi-Oh! is in a terrible format. And I'm actually going to kind of change things up here a little bit because that's actually going to make things a lot easier uh, so I can make sure I'm still recording. Um, but I wanted to go through these so that I could get the community's thoughts on these things. Uh, as the views are actually still going up on this video, I didn't think it would blow up that much, but it actually did. Um, and I want to go through these and talk about kind of my thoughts and some of these I've replied to and some of these I haven't. Um, but I just want to go through these and, and just kind of give a, I don't know, a community roundtable discussion about this because it actually blows me away how unhappy people are with this format. I really thought when we saw things like Ash and Poplar going to one that people were going to be really happy and excited about this format. I know I was. And now... Ever since going to that regional this past Saturday, granted I scrubbed out, but that really hasn't changed my mind in that regard about this format. Like I could have gone nine and zero, and I think I I actually know for a fact I would still have the same consensus about this format. I'm not saying this because I did bad. I saw a couple comments um, of people like poking fun at me and uh, saying things that, as I like to say, you can't say that on television. They went into my held for review section and were basically just saying like. I'll put it in G-rated terms. Uh, you're saying this because you scrubbed out. No. Even if I went undefeated and got my invite, no. It it really doesn't matter, right? It's because the player base is really unhappy. So let's go ahead and dive on into these here. Um, user MG says, I feel like everyone playing modern Yu-Gi-Oh! is at that point where they really want to like the game, but 80% of the time it is legitimately the least fun, biggest waste of time and money you could possibly be doing at this moment. Yeah. Uh, he says, there are fun interactions in this game for sure, and there are interesting things that can happen from game to game, but a majority of the time, I feel like you may as well just show your hands to each other and agree on if the player going second has the out or not. That is so true, and I even replied to this person's comment. I said, honestly, that's a very fair point. You know, that's what people mean with, like, dice rolls and stuff, and I even saw some sort of picture. Uh, it was either on YouTube or Twitter or something where you roll the dice, and and then you go down a literal skill tree, like just from top to bottom. And it's like, did you win the die roll? Yes. Were you able to full combo? Yes. Uh, is the opponent able to break it? No. Okay, next game. Like you could basically, like this person says, you just show each other your hand. Hey, I ha I can make a broken board. This is what my end board will be. Can you out it? I didn't open up any hand traps or board breakers. So let's just go to the next game. Or hey, I'm playing gimmick puppet FTK and I opened up the field spell or access to it. I can FTK you. Are you on board breakers? Yes. Okay, you lose. Let's go to the next game. Like game one can be done in like 60 seconds. Like it, it's it's honestly crazy that I thought that we were like as far away from that as we've ever been in a while. And we're actually more close to that than we've been in quite some time. And we're especially going to be even closer to that in Rage of the Abyss. Because when once we get Rage of the Abyss in like the next couple of weeks, it's just basically going to be, hey, did you open up one of your six Mulch Armies? 
and really you prefer to open up Fualos instead of Perulia because Fualos is better. So it's like, did you open the Fualos or not? No, then I guess I win. And if you opened up double Fualos, well, then you're basically drawing two cards every time I summon a monster. So yeah, I guess I just sort of crap all over the floor now because I'm going to lose. <laughs> so yeah. Um, next comment here. This person said, <laughs> this one made me laugh. Have you tried playing with your friends and locals only? <laughs> What do you think I do whenever I go to a regional or a YCS, bro? <laughs> I go to locals to playtest for events. And, like, I even in my reply comment, I said, I go to locals when I'm playtesting for a big event. Like, I don't know what you mean. Like, I play with my friends at locals when I'm playtesting for a big event because I am a competitive player. And I think that's sort of where, like, a disconnect is between me and some people of the community, or maybe even some of my subscribers. Like, I'm sure not all of you that watch my videos are necessarily, you know, competitive players, gas to the floor, you know, gimmick puppet lock, you have to play Snake Eyes, you have to play your bell or you're doing it wrong type of thing. You know, not everybody wants to be competitive that watches YouTube videos. I have a friend of mine who plays on Master Duel, aka Master Shits, and he doesn't know what Tempai cards do, or at least he didn't until I introduced him to cards. He thought Fiendsmith cards were in Master Shits, which of course they aren't. But uh, I told him, hey, no, they're not. I checked. He thought they were. He didn't know what Fiendsmith cards do. Like, like he's so behind the fucking eight ball that like it's insane to me. Which again proves my point that Master Shits is terrible because you're never going to be able to get someone from Master Shits into paper play if they don't even know what Tempai or Fiendsmith does. Like, hello. But besides the point. You know, he, he's a casual player, but he wants to make his decks as competitive as possible, which that's a whole nother side rant because it's like if you're trying to make your deck as competitive as possible, you may as well play a competitive deck. But I digress. That's a whole nother can of worms. But basically, he wants to maintain a competitive edge, but also play casual decks. Essentially, the way I see it is like taking a casual deck and making it as strong as possible even though if you go up against something like Ubel or Snake Eyes, you're just going to get Raffle Stomped. Like, that's that's the other unfortunate thing about Yu-Gi-Oh! that I don't know if I've ever talked about in the past or not, where let's let's take my buddy's deck that he's been trying to make competitive. Crawler Mech Knight. Dog shit, right? Like, you go to a regional, you're going to go 0-9. Like, you're not going to win, right? Most likely. But that's also an issue that you can't take a more roguish deck or a table 500 deck or you know whatever and like see some kind of success because you're just you're gonna get blown out by these meta decks and obviously not every deck is made equally in Yu-Gi-Oh! I've talked about that before um but it's also a shame that if you've only got twenty dollars to spend on a deck you can't even you know go get a structure deck and be competitive like we've seen in the past where you can be like with the fire king structure deck the branded structure deck was a great example because even if you didn't have seventy dollars to drop on alu bars yes alu bars at their peak were seventy dollars believe it or not you could still kind of get away with it by buying three fallen of albaz uh, structure decks you just play spriggan's kit instead it's not completely optimal but it's something um, and you could still see success with it. Like, it was really cool. You know, it's not often in Yu-Gi-Oh! that you can go out, buy three structure decks that used to be $9.99. Now you're paying like $10, $11, $12 after tax. Uh, actually, probably more like $11 to $13 after tax. Um, you can't buy three of them, smash them together into a 40-card pile, and then do well. Like, it, it just, it really doesn't happen much anymore. Unless, like, the the reprints and hand traps in are just godly, Right. Um, this person said, nothing changed with the ban list. I mean, yeah, they did the changes they did to sell more product. I mean, that's how, that's what a ban list is for. Uh, the current moment, at the current moment, you have to play 15 to 18 hand traps just to hope you have enough to stop their board. That's true. Then on top of that, you have to hope you draw engine with enough hand traps, then hope they don't have hand traps. Going second and playing right now is absolutely RNG. Yes, because even if you're on Tempai and you're playing 20 to 25 hand traps, there's a chance you just open up five hand traps and you draw into a sixth one. Even whenever I was playing Tempai originally with my Kashtira engine, there were times where I opened up like four hand traps and maybe like a brick card, like say like a Fadra, and I'm top decking another hand trap. And I'm like, I guess I just crap all over the floor now because my opponent's probably going to be able to do something on the next turn because I'm not going to have enough hand traps for the next turn. Even if you're playing board breakers, like what you see four hand traps and a droplets and like you draw into a lightning storm like what are you doing with your life it's 
it's really hard to go second. And Tempai is still one of the best decks in the format because it's just such a powerful going second deck. There's even some builds I've seen where you can go first with it. Uh, this person said Konami should really focus more on making VR instead of releasing more toxic cards. I guess. Uh, VR is such a niche thing. I don't really feel like I can comment on that well because VR is just, it's VR. Like, ain't nobody out here trying to buy a $3,500 Apple headset. Like, Konami's always going to release toxic cards. Um, there was another comment here. Here we go. Yeah, I was going to say you should play casual slash rogue, but if you're a competitive player, then it sounds like it's best you step away. I did that back in 2020 after Electromite got banned, and I haven't been back since. Just been playing stupid random side decks. I've also started playing GOAT and Edison format, which has been extremely refreshing, if I'm being honest. I mean, yeah, here's the issue with being a meta player, or rather just being a competitive player, not even like having to play a meta deck, right? The issue is, is that players like me who hate the format, think the format's garbage, but still want to grind to get their invite, we're probably still going to be going to events if we're able to, right? We're still going to be playing the best decks. We're going to be doing our best with what we have access to. Is it a rich man's game? This format is definitely a rich man's game. Um, and we're going to continue to play at least until we get our invites so that we don't have to play in this bad format, right? Like, obviously, as a competitive player, I could say, you know what, I'm going to take until February off and just focus on content creation and then go to the YCS in February. But that's also months that I'm missing out where, again, you could argue it's sunk cost fallacy, where I'm sitting on a Fiendsmith package and I'm sitting on Snake Eyes cards that I pulled for my three cases of tens. Yes, I lost my ass on it, even with pulling a Chaos Angel and a Little Knight. I digress, um, but I'm sitting on those cards and they're collecting dust. I'm sitting on three copies of Perulia that I pulled from my case of Infinite Forbidden and it's collecting dust. And so it's like, if I sell those cards, then you're pretty much not able to be a competitive player unless you repurchase those cards. Like you could play Runic Stun, but you're gonna get your butt cheeks blown out. Like there's no in between. Like you need to have the meta cards or you need to play something more rogue and hope that you just can maybe skirt by with like a six and three record at a regional and maybe squeeze in a top 48 invite. Like it's it's really unfortunate when you look at it from that angle. Um, this person, this is what I wanted to talk about with the, with the chess timers. People have brought this up in the past and we I always... Uh, de not, not debunk it, I guess isn't the right term, but people in the community always debunk it, but let's just debunk it again. Yu-Gi-Oh! should have had chess time rules to be balanced in time and not suddenly time happens in the end. No. the So what I replied with, Konami would never buy hundreds of thousands of time clocks, and the way that those typically work is that each individual player would get, say, 45 minutes. I think the time rules are fine, but it's the facts decks can play for so long. So the thing is that this has been a whole fucking debate since the time rules became end of the current phase instead of three turns or five turns, whatever the case was. The thing is with chess clocks, <clears throat> and, and I feel like that this comes from people who don't play chess or have never watched like uh, the Bobby Fischer movie, whatever it was called with uh, Tobey Maguire. Um, chess clocks, both players get let's say 45 minutes. So if I'm playing against you and I take 10 minutes for my turn and then I go to pass turn, I click the clock. <clears throat> I now have 10 minutes less than you on my clock. You have your full 45 minutes. On top of that, if you have a hand trap, do you realize how much clicking, <coughs> excuse me, do you realize how much clicking of these stupid ass time clocks you would hear at a regional? I don't think a lot of people realize that when you're in a convention center, it's loud because everybody's talking, but could you imagine constantly hearing <laughs> all day at a convention center for nine rounds of people constantly clicking their dumbass clocks? Because if you have a hand trap, you got to <laughs> click the clock and then pitch your hand trap and re-click the clock. And so you have that aspect. And then even if like you don't have a hand trap and the opponent combos, 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 okay, hits their clock. Okay. You've got 45 minutes. Each player has their own amount. So if one player plays longer than you and runs out of time, how is it fair to them? And then how do you even discuss, how do you decide end of match procedures when it comes to chess clocks when like one player is lower on time than you? Like it, it would be this whole headache, not to mention the hundreds of thousands of clocks they'd have to buy to put on the table when 
Y'all got to understand, and I'm not trying to be mean to the Yu-Gi-Oh community. It's just a fact. A lot of these Yu-Gi-Oh players are insulin resistant. A lot of these Yu-Gi-Oh players pulled the pin on the fat grenade back in 2005, and they are just fat, fat people. Like, their rolls are hanging off the chairs. They're almost breaking these damn things. Do you really think that players who are shoulder to shoulder with smelly, fat, neck beard dudes are going to have enough space for their mat, their... Uh, notepad to keep track of light points, their pen, their dice, their field center, their possible calculator that they have to show because they got a flex, that they spent $1,000 on a stupid-ass TI-83 calculator that they used in college while they were looking at anime waifus on their Google Chromebooks, and then you also have to have a big-ass wooden uh, clock there? Like, no, ain't nobody got time for that. Like, literally, look at any YCS, like, look at the coverage and watch how shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder some of these fat-ass Yu-Gi-Oh players are. And you got the one thin dude getting smushed by another dude with his butt crack hanging out because he can't pull his pants up right. He can't find nothing big enough to fit him at the big and tall dressing rooms. Besides the point, <laughs> someone's going to get a laugh out of that rant. You're welcome. But all of that to say, <clears throat> the time clock thing just wouldn't work. Um, <clears throat> last one here before we go, uh, shout out to JRPG Gamer, one of my subscribers, and, uh, Jawan Buchanan, another one of our subscribers as well. Um, it's the pricing to keep up with the game. Whoever has the most money wins. This is evident more with Fiendsmith and now the new Mole Charming card. Pay so much to win and compete. Budget players are now suffering. I'm spending so much just to get the Protoss lock for Ritual Beast, and not making Top Cut means I get nothing out of the money I spent. And this is locals. So this man is spending money just to play at locals. Jawan Buchanan responds with, It's not like it was back in the day when you could take a casual or even a rogue deck to locals and at least do decently well. The power creep has gotten so bad if you aren't playing a meta deck at locals, you can just forget it. And to this, I said, depending on your local player base, that is true. Because there is a local um, player base in uh, Tampa that uh, my buddy told about, again, shout out to Valley D as always, uh, where there's like four or five players at a particular locals who just play stun and like they're all dog water players because they're in this little bubble where they think that stun is good and it's not, it's dog shit. But besides the point, my dad would get along great with all those people, right? <laughs> but uh, depending on your player base, yeah, like you need a meta deck to do well or you need something that's so off the wall rogue, like it's designed to beat the meta that you just do well because you win the dice roll all day. But if you lose the die roll, then you get your cheeks clapped. It's a really difficult position to be in. And even like one person said on here, I thought I read the comment. Maybe I didn't. I could have sworn that I did. Um, yeah, this last one here. I'm sorry. I know I said last one, but last one for real. It's funny you say these points because I had a similar conversation with the people, my locals. In short, I'm no longer friends with them because they're coping this format's good and want to justify Fiendsmith and Moltrum is good for the game. This format's terrible currently and will only get worse once Rage releases. The fact that this person lost friends over a debate or an argument, whatever you want to call it, because this format's dog water, uh, th that that's insane to me that someone can't be friends with someone who says this format's terrible. Okay, pimp. That's, that's wild. I feel really bad for that person. But let me know what you think about all these comments down in the comment section below. Comment inception here. <clears throat> but yeah, um, the community ain't happy with this format. And uh, as what I read, I thought I read on here, maybe not. I've read so many comments now. I feel like at this point and talked about the format a lot. But a balance isn't necessarily going to fix this. Uh, changing how sets work isn't going to fix this. You got to change the card pool. Maybe set rotation could fix this to a degree, even though I really wouldn't want set rotation in the game. But people aren't happy. And it's a damn shame because we just got a ban list. We're probably not going to get another ban list until maybe January going into the YCS Orlando format. Guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. I'm really interested to see what people will be saying on here. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.